Kind of fun to throw back like that, isn't that? 20 years ago, that was the opening video of 211 in 2004. Isn't that something? That was hip and cool back then, huh? <laughs> Well, I'm joined on the stage today with my brother Ethan, actually. Ethan Hutton, he's a missionary in Costa Rica. He and his family are here. A number of you have been praying for them over the years, uh, have been encouraging them, financially supporting them. And so he's here to actually share the theme verse. I won't ask who you think is older and younger, more mature and less mature and things like that, right? But uh, we know who would win. That's funny. <laughs> Well, our verse today is Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now, if you would, please, let's go ahead and say that together. They, they devoted, devoted themselves to the, to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to, to the, the breaking of bread and to prayer. Now, for me, this verse, what really stands out is that fellowship part. Living in Costa Rica the past seven years, we have not had the same level of fellowship that we had when we lived here in Nebraska. And it's difficult. But he says, don't just immerse yourselves into the teaching, but also the fellowship. And so I want to encourage you that, that don't just come on Sunday mornings for the worship and the teaching but also pursue that fellowship with this incredible body of Christ that God has given us. This ability to have brothers and sisters here together, not just on Sunday mornings, but that we can have fellowship all week long, encouraging one another and pointing each other to the truth of Christ. So let's pray. God, thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, but that you didn't leave it there, but you also gave us your Holy Spirit so that we can live lives that are pleasing to you and that we can live together in unity in the spirit. So help us to do exactly that, having fellowship with one another, encouraging one another in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I invite you to be seated. So I don't know if you heard the story, but uh, there, there was a older woman living alone in her home and one night she woke up from her deep sleep and, and she heard some, some noises and it sounded like maybe a, a door was crashed through and somebody was kind of rummaging through some things out in the kitchen and sure enough she came out of her bedroom slowly and she looked down the hall and she made her, her way down the hall and sure enough she sees a burglar going through her house and she yells the first thing that comes to her mind Acts 242! <laughs> and the burglar just stopped the old woman was shocked. She took the time to call 911. Uh, the police showed up. The burglar hadn't moved. And the police were dumbfounded, as was the woman. And they had to ask this guy. They said, what in the world? Why did you just stop, freeze, not move? Almost trembling, he said. She said she had an ax and two 42s. Our theme verse for today, from Acts 2, 42. That was the first verse used at Christ Lincoln 75 years ago in the very first sermon ever shared on the edge of Lincoln, Nebraska, huh? To plant a church on the edge of the city because we're going to need to bring Jesus to all the corners of the city. And so let's go to the edge, and what do you know as we have sat here in ministry over 75 years? Are we at the edge? <laughs> We're right in the middle. We're right in the middle of the city, and the city continues to grow up around us, and we continue to be a beacon of the light of Jesus Christ. And that's what we're celebrating today. God's grace for 75 years and beyond, right? Because we have tied into a church body for years before. We were planted by Trinity. We give thanks for them. We have been planted by others who came into the area to even start that congregation. We've come from other parts of the globe through our ancestry. We go all the way back to even the Jews and the Hebrews and our heritage intertwines as people who are bought by God, who are redeemed and saved because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, let's take a look at that theme verse for today, but let's give it a little bit more context. Let's see what's going on in the early church in, in that day in the book of Acts. See, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together. 
and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Those who were joining in because they were hearing the teaching. They were hearing from the eyewitnesses. They were digging into what God had declared, what God was declaring. And then they were breaking bread. They were people who took time to celebrate the communion because the body and blood of Christ was given and shed upon that cross. When he was buried in the tomb, they thought all was hopeless, all was lost, but it wasn't. Because three days later, he would rise to their amazement. They were shocked as the women come to run and tell the story, as the Roman guards are, are uh, getting together with the Jewish leaders who they don't get together, but they didn't know what to do with this. The tomb's empty. We were guarding it. He's alive. What does this mean? And for centuries, the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus has impacted the world that we get to live in such a way. But it breaks my heart, because today, today it's not cool to go to church. What? Not here at Christ Lincoln though, right? You know what I mean? But in our society, in our culture, that's not the thing to do. That's not the popular thing to do. I don't need that. I can worship God in the woods. I can worship God in the boat. I can, you can. You can worship God anywhere. But as the scriptures declare, don't give up meeting together. Don't give up the fellowship. Don't give up the time together as brothers and sisters in Christ. But what breaks my heart even more is the image that the church has in the world today, that it has taken a nosedive of negativity, that it's almost the church's fault for why we are where we are. On one hand, we could say it is. Because when the church of God lives out its faith in the public square, outside of these walls, in our neighborhoods, in our homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, when the light of Christ is shining, lives are changed. Amen? Amen. So what's going on, church? Are we not living it out? Because every time we do, transformation is occurring. Listen to this quote from Eric Metaxas. This is countercultural, what we just read in Acts 2, 42. This is countercultural to the narrative of society that tells the false tale of the church hurting and harming people. But isn't that what we hear today? It's on the news. Just think of all the scandals and so forth. Yes, individuals in the church have harmed others throughout history. You have to admit it. But the overall body of Christ is responsible for upholding biblical values that offers the radical idea of all people are valuable. Where do we get that from? There is no other place in history, there is no other place or literature that we get all people are valuable except by God. It is the foundation of the way God created all things that people are valuable, even when they mess up. Even when the church messes up, you are valuable. When we hurt people and harm people, we are valuable. See, this is what we get from the church, not only in today's day and age, but what it was in the past and what it will be in the future, because this is the conduit of God's love and care and grace and mercy. It is the ark of salvation that comes into the world by the blood of Jesus so that all people may know that Jesus is the Christ. See that ark, the church? See, the job of the church, because all lives are valuable, the radical idea in our society that, that, that we care for the poor and sick. We don't cast them out. They're not the outcasts. Let them just go die on their own out in the wilderness. Don't disease me. All are equal in God's sight. Yeah, he loves each and every one of you. He loves every human being in this city, this state, and this world. Racism is wrong. That's the radical idea of the church and God's holy word. That's what he declares. And women are not second-class citizens. They have been throughout history, but they are not. It is perfect helpmate, man and woman together. That is the gift of God. It's radical in our culture. We want to tear down these boundaries. We want to do what we want to do, however we want to do. 
But God gives us boundaries that direct us into things that are healthy and good and right for our lives and the lives of people around us. And it's the church that lives that way, that shines that light, that other people go, what do you got that I don't have? And we get to go, Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's the grace of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. Thanks be to God for Jesus. Eric Metaxas would also say, wherever Christians have brought their faith out of the caves and church buildings on Sunday morning and into the light of day in the public sphere every day of the week, we see dramatic improvement in people's lives. The facts of history on this score are astonishing and desperately need to be known. Do you understand that? When the church lives out the love, the hope, the grace, the joy, the peace, this sounds a lot like the fruits of the Spirit, right? Because as the church, the Spirit lives in us, we are the temples of God who go into the world to live in such a way that other people get to know who? Our Father and His Son and the Spirit that is alive and well, Jesus. See, we look throughout history, I think we forget this, and even as the church, this is not on the top of our minds, we almost get persuaded, we're like, you're right, the church is just harming people. We shouldn't be talking about our faith and living it out. Are you kidding me? When the faith is lived out, lives are changed for the better. In the fourth century, when Constantine finally made religion the way in Jesus Christ, legal and okay, that persecution stopped, do you know what popped up all over the place? Because of monks and nuns, hospitals. Hospitals popped up for the first time because the Christian believers were at work because the sick, the dying, the poor who are in need, we are going to be available for them. It was the 11th century when the first university is created by monks, the first university, because you are valuable enough to be educated, men and women. The university was created. We forget that in the 16th and 17th century, it was the good people of God that actually created, figured out, designed, discovered the scientific method. This was a Christian thing, going, wow, God has given this, this beautiful creation, and, and we get to learn and discover and play within this, and we figure some things out. And that scientific method is actually a foundation of Christianity, going, God made it, we get to discover it, it's amazing. And let us not forget that it's the 19th and 20th centuries when the abolition of slavery would happen in this world. And I'm not saying that it's gone entirely on our planet. Unfortunately, it's not because humans continue to degrade life. But the job of the church, they stood up. It was Wilbur Wilberforce, right? William Wilberforce and, and others in the evangelical church that stood up and through law passed things that would abolish the Atlantic slave trade and said, end of this, because lives matter. All lives matter. All lives are valuable before God. In fact, it was even that same group that got rid of something in India called Suti. Have you ever heard of this? This is where they would burn the widows on the deceased funeral pyre. Sick sickening. And yet the church stood up and said, enough. It was here in our own nation where the civil rights movement began in the evangelical Christian church and said, enough. Life matters. Human life matters. We have to stand up for something. And the church did, and things were changed. In fact, it was even within the evangelical Christian church that the Jim, Lo Jim Crow laws were abolished because they got involved within politics. Church, who gather together who continue to dine together because Christ invites us to a precious meal, who continue to be people who fellowship, and we invite other people into the fellowship, and we're a people of prayer. We hesitated using as a theme verse today, Acts 2.11. You want to know why? Come on. Because we're in 2.11, and it's based upon Acts 2.11, speaking a language so all may understand. Beautiful. 20 years. Yeah. Praise God. May it continue. May the church of God continue as a bright light in this city and this state and this nation and this world. But let me back up for a moment. 
because we, we've been running through Acts 2.42 and, and 2.11 mentioned here, but let's go to Acts chapter 1 because it sets it all up. Well, let's go back to Acts 2.42 real quick just to remember this first. Let's read it all together. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. What do you think the church ought to do today? Devote themselves, huh? That's it. But let's also focus on what seemed to be the last piece. We'll get there in just a moment. What you hear around here is something trying to do that in rows, circles, arrows, and dots. That's what we've been using, haven't we? Let's gather together. Let's fellowship. Let's worship. And then we've got to be gathering together out in the community. And we've got to be an inviting group who circle up in small groups. We've got to be arrows who are serving because we care, because the poor, the sick, and the needy, we're going to show up because God has blessed us to be a blessing. We're arrows here as we serve here. We're arrows out there once a month in each place. Can we do it? And dots, we have this personal relationship, this personal devotion life with God because we matter to him individually. God comes to share his grace with us. And so maybe right now one of those is a little weaker for you, and maybe you want to step up one of those, rows, circles, arrows, or dots. Yay! That's what we do is we continue to learn, and we continue to grow, and we continue to mature. But let us not skip past. In Acts 2.42, the last thing that was said, let's be a people of prayer. It's not the last resort. It's where we begin. Acts chapter 1, verse 14 says, they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. Do you hear this? It wasn't just about the 12 disciples. It wasn't about the new guy they added in to get back to 12. This was about all the people of God following the way, the truth, and the life. Let's be a people of prayer. And I can't think of a better thing to do on a 75th anniversary, on a 20th anniversary, on a 10th anniversary, on a 5th anniversary. I don't care if it's our first anniversary. What do we do? Let's pray. 